All right, now in this video, I'm going to explain the function servo on. It says DI signal, digital input signal servo on. Servo on means when you, when you turn on the servo, it will lock itself. Now, what does it mean? Now, right now my servo is not on, so I can easily move that spindle. Okay, I can move it. Now, if I lock the servo, if I turn on the servo, it means it's ready to take the command. Right now, it's not ready to take the command because it's not on. So when I turn it on, it will lock. I cannot move it manually, but I can only move it using some control signals. So how to do that? There's a very simple step. Here we have to do the wiring, but before wiring, we have to select the terminal which will be used to actuate the servo, to turn on the servo, okay? So if you see here, digital input one, this is DI1, DI2. We have digital input one, two, three, four, five, six inputs. This we have discussed in the previous video in which, in which we were discussing about 25 control pin terminals. So we have six digital inputs which which has specific pin number 17, 18, 5, 3, 15 and 14. Okay. So we can select which pin we want to use to lock the servo. Alright. So whatever pin you want to use, they have these have specified parameters. Like pin number 17, the function of pin number 17 is specified by 2 hyphen 10. This is the parameter number. Okay. Similarly, pin number 18 is speci specified by 2 to 11 and 14 is 2 to 15. Now, if I want to use pin number 17 to work as servo on off, then I have to put some numbers in that which are against uh, specific. You cannot put it anything. If you put 0, 01 in that, okay, 0, 01, 0, 01 is the code for servo on. But you can see here there are two codes 01 and 101. If you put 01, then you have to connect NC switch. NC switch, this is specific. If you put 01, you have to use NC switch to turn on the servo. If you put 101, you have to put NO switch to turn on the servo. Now, where we need NC, suppose you have an emergency switch here. If you have an emergency switch, you have to put 01. If you have a toggle switch or NO switch, you can put 101. So in our case, what I'm going to do is, because this is optional, if in case you don't have NO, you can use NC as well, just by putting 1 before 01, all right? So in case of NO. So in our case, I'm using an NO, NO contact. And specifically, if you see this IO board, I'm going to use this toggle switch, this switch, to lock the servo, all right? So I'm going to hold it like this, all right? So I'm going to wire this toggle button to my HMI or to my servo control pins. All right. So the wiring is very simple. One end goes to pin number 17 and another end goes to pin number 13. All right. It's something like that. I can show you that in this software as well. If you see the proper diagram. Now, if you remember, pin number 13 was COM minus, which was internal zero volt. So I'm going to connect 13 number with 17 with a switch in between. All right, and four should be connected to seven because four was COM plus seven was internal VDD. So this should be shorted to complete the circuit. If you remember, see this part, or oh, this is this is connected incorrectly. Hold on a second. This part of the LED, it's like that. Okay, this is reverse bias. This is connected to pin number seventeen, which gives COM minus zero volt. This is connected to pin number four. And even this should be like this. Okay, this is connected incorrectly. I can replace it. So you have to make sure your internal LEDs are forward biased. So it will be like that. This goes to four. And this you can connect it like that, you know, just in case. So this is connected to 17. Okay, let's not have it as of now. So now all I have to do is I have to connect a switch to 17 and 13. So there we have the switch. I'll take some couple of wires. We are using some flexible wires here. So this part goes to, I'm connecting this part to pin number 17. And this one to pin number 13. All right. If you want to see, I have done something like that. That's 13 number, that's 17 number, and there it goes right next I have to short four number and seven number which is shown over here so I'll take another wire just to short pin number four and pin number seven so you can see that over here so seven is shorted to pin number four this is a black wire and this is right now on so this means server is on so let me just turn it off 
So right now servo is off. You can see that I can move the servo manually. Okay. If you want to make it on, what I'll do is I'll just turn it on. And by turning it on, you will you will hear some humming noise coming from the servo. Right? If if you can't hear it, I can show that servo is locked. So this is my servo. Now I cannot move it. I cannot move it. Even if I put much force, this is stiff now because it is ready to take the command. It will not move. It will lock itself. Okay. If I want to unlock it, I will turn off this. And now servo is ready to move by external force. Okay. One more thing. If I if I lock the servo again, you will find an LED glows up on the servo drive. This yellow LED. This glows up because I turn on the servo. If I turn it off then with the toggle switch, this goes off. So right now my switch is off. If I turn it on, this LED goes back again. So it says my servo is locked. So this is the status you can find on the servo driver to find out whether the servo is running or not. Okay. You can also take the status on an LED and you can put it on the panel and that is the feedback. This we'll discuss later in the tutorials how to do that. But this exercise, I'm, I'm telling you this because we are going to do the exercises now on velocity mode in which we need to include this, include this uh, servo on of operation. All right. And now one more thing, you wouldn't, I didn't explain you the parameter because this we have already entered by default. In parameter 210, let me show you how this is 101 here. So I'm going to, going to the servo, click on the parameter, parameter list. This is the list. Now I want to read this one, so I click on read drive. And this is going to read the parameters. All right, whatever is stored in the server system. So the parameter was 2 10. So I'll open up this one. This is 2 10. This is here. So this is 101. This is 101 by default. So this this is this defines the function of di1. And why 101 defines whether the server is on and off, this is written in the manual. If you're not using Delta Servo, if you're using some other servo, they might have they might have mentioned the function of your digital input by some codes. Like 101 in Delta defines that the servo should run, servo should uh, this pin should operate as servo on and off. This is taken S on, this is servo on by default. So this table has been uh, this information has been extracted from the manual itself, from this manual itself. It's difficult to find it otherwise. So you can use this presentation which is attached in this course to understand this function. This is a quick note you can make. So when it is on, servo is on and ready. When this is op, off, servo off and not ready. So this is about digital signal servo on off operation. Very much used. Before, because if you don't turn on the servo and if you keep on giving the pulses from the PLC or from the analog cards or from the potentiometer, it will not run. So you have to make sure server is on, then you give the commands, then it will run. That's how it happens. Alright, if you have any question, put me a comment. Thank you.